Hi, it's Alina Kaponik here today, and I want to talk about Antarctica. My memories, my intuition, they keep going back to Antarctica quite a bit lately. Um, specifically from what I had talked about in one of my interviews recently with Denny Hunt, remembering that I had been one of the SSP teams that went to Antarctica during my service with them, with the ICC, um, that a few scientific groups went down there to, to basically catalog the various um, artifacts that are there in the Atlantean outposts. These artifacts are mainly advanced technology like the Neuralink chairs, or what I call them. I call them the Neuralink chairs. But it's like these chairs are also constructs that you sit in and you can communicate with others through these chairs. It's like a um, psychic Neuralink connection. Where once you're sitting in the chair, there's an energetic field around you. Sort of like an electromagnetic field of different frequencies. You sit in the chair and you're able to communicate with somebody else on the other side of the planet. Psychically, you don't even need to, um, to have the chair to be in the chair yourself. You're just communicating with somebody that way because the chair amplifies your own abilities and you can make a mind connection with somebody through this construct, basically this mind construct and you're, you're, it, it seems like you're physically there talking to the person and interacting with them. So that's one of the, the things that these Neuralink chairs can do. And I've talked about it before, but what came up in my memories is that I actually went to Antarctica and these scientist teams were cataloging the, the Antarctic outpost um, technology. And I remember putting my hands out and sensing the energies around this Neuralink chair that sort of looked like it was stone, but it wasn't stone. Um, and I basically put my hands out forward and energetically sort of felt the, the stone and this blue flash of blue energy came and there wasn't anything out at the back of the stone chair, but when my energy connected with the energetic field, around the Neuralink stone chair, suddenly what looked like hieroglyphs of some ancient language appeared with these squiggly letters, like these backwards letters. And it was like an energy code imprint that you can connect with and activate the functions of the Neuralink chair construct. And it all links back to Atlantis. And during the Atlantean times, it's their technology in these Atlantean outposts in Antarctica. So, and it's, I believe it's connected to the Agartha network as well. They use these Neuralink chairs and the chairs can open time travel portals as well. So it's, it's, it's something that's quite amazing that what this technology can be used for. It's very versatile. And my memories keep going back to that, the focal point of Antarctica, quite a bit that I went into these outposts, these Atlantean outposts through underground tunnel systems. And these tunnels also had hier hieroglyphic symbols on the walls of the tunnels themselves. And when you touch these hieroglyphics, 
like when you put up your hand towards the symbols, it lights up somehow and your energy connects with the symbols. And you kind of get these pictures in your head of what these symbols did and it's all interconnected with energy. And like, it's really important to understand what the symbol is because um, certain symbols are connected. They could be connected with positive energy or with negative energy. Um, so it's really important to understand, actually understand the symbology of what you're interacting with, the symbols itself. Um, because symbology can be used in different sorts of esoteric uh, modalities and in magic. So it's really important to understand what energies and frequencies you're connecting with for symbology or any type of energy even. So I have these memories of doing that in Antarctica, connecting with these hieroglyphs um, on some of the technology and also in the tunnel walls. So that's something that's still these memories are highly connected and they keep on coming back over and over again and they're the same. Always the same. It doesn't then nothing really changes with the memory. It's always the same of me walking through the tunnels, um and the underground tunnels in order to reach the um the Atlantean outposts. So it's below ground still, but it's like middle ground under the ice shelf of Antarctica. And seeing all kinds of technologies like supercomputers, different types of energy sources, like something that looks like a Tesla coil perhaps, or even more advanced, like free energy devices that um, give energy output so you don't you don't need to have electricity anymore to power your homes, your, you know, your cars or anything in supercomputers, cryogenic devices. That's all in the outposts, different communication devices. There's even like models for ships there. There's prototypes because some of these out outposts were laboratories. Um, and those outposts are still there. Um, most, some of them have sunk. They're underwater. You know, they could be off the coast of Antarctica, but there are some outposts that are intact under the ice shelf and they could still be active if properly, you know, if properly managed, those outposts could be reactivated and used again. And I, from what I can remember, there's like from four to ten different outposts um, on the continent of Antarctica that could still be active. And they have different portal way technology so you could portal in and out from Antarctica without being noticed. That's something else that's active there. So these memories keep on coming back and back same sequence. So, you know, and all of this technology is, it's, it's frequency energy based. That's how you interact with it. It's all based on neural links. Um, to activate the technology and to work with it. It's, it's advanced technology going back to Atlantis and even Lemuria and even before Atlantis. So, it's, it's technology that's been there for millions of years. Because um, Atlantis is more than just 26,000 years ago. It goes back to a few million years um, over the history of Atlantis and how long it's existed. More than 26,000 years, more than 70,000 years. It's been there for a couple of million years. And the Atlanteans, what it was partially humans and it was partially ET humanoid like races that interacted together and worked together in these Atlantean outposts. So there were different groups 
um, spread out all over the Earth continents of Atlantean outposts and ETs and humanoids in these outposts. So it wasn't just one specific group. It was many different groups and many different outposts in the continents. And they had their own cultures, they had their own technologies, and um, so it was all sophisticated and vast. So it wasn't just a few different outposts on one continent of the Earth. It was many outposts spread out. Um, and it was a very, they were really rich civilizations in culture, in sciences, spirituality, and understanding of multidimensional concepts, like traveling to different planets, um, being able to heal themselves without needing pharmaceutical medicine. It was just energy healing. So it, it's, it's, it's quite amazing what there is out there. And there's also hidden libraries of information in these outposts, all kinds of research, what they did, um, log all their research and information and knowledge. And they stored it, stored it in these knowledge libraries in these Atlantean outposts. So there's also that. So there's quite a bit out there. Um, that's that's still intact and it's being studied so this is what i wanted to talk about again i've mentioned it before but you know um there's more to that and i wanted to add that in here today um i strongly feel that these Neuralink chairs this technology is actively being used by the agartha networks by the different Agartha groups and they've modified the technology to even work better for them. So that's how they can, um, you know, sit in these Neuralink chairs and have these holographic constructs to talk to different people without needing to physically be in physical contact. It's, it's done through holographic inserts and it feels like you're almost there physically interacting with them. And it almost is like that. You just don't need to be physically present there to do it. The technology is there for that. And even being careful with that technology because just in the way of who's contacting you and being able to discern um, who's actually making the contact with you if these holographic constructs are active, who the heck can be contacting you, making sure that you're being contacted by the being that says is contacting you, reading their energies, asking them to tell you the truth, discerning for yourself, does this feel right for you or does it feel wrong, you know, because um, it is psychically connected as well, so just being aware of what's going on, what's really going on. That's something important because the technology is out there, the symbols are out there, all of it is out there. You know, just be aware of what's going on with you and listen to your own truth. Discern what's, what's real, what's not, what's going on with you. It's quite important these days. So thank you and namaste.